All right. Um, I had to type in here just in case you missed it. I have to type in H0. We're always talking about the null hypothesis when we're talking about our rejection for 10, 4, number 5. All right, now we're going to move backwards a little bit. We're going to go 10, 4, number 3, which is actually a right-tailed test. So I am going to make my life a whole lot easier. I'm going to copy, right, highlight, highlight first, copy, control C, and then go over here and control V, paste. Let me make my cells big enough so I can see what the heck I'm doing. There we go. All right, now for this problem, it's 0 0.3. You can see it right there. There's the hypothesis and the null and in the alternative. Alpha is 0 0.05 this time. 75 for X, 200 for N. And because I've got cell references in here, see that? It automatically got recalculated when I typed in my new numbers. Groovy. And so did this for that matter. Square root parentheses b1, which is 0.3, times 1 minus b1, right, divided by n, which was 200, all got figured because I already typed in the formula. That's the beauty of copying and pasting. That's why it's nice to do it in Excel rather than stat crunch for that matter. All right, critical value. I don't want a lower critical value. I want an upper critical value because this is a right tail test, so it's a positive z alpha. Now to make that happen, what you have to do is you have to take the complement of this. So norm S inverse gets you the one on the left side, right? That's the way norm S inverse rolls. So you need to do 1 minus B2. All right, think about this. 0.05 is the area in the right tail, right? That must mean that your Z value is over on the right-hand side. But norm S inverse as a function only takes left tail. So you got to do 1 minus the 0.05 to get to the 0.95 that's on the left-hand side. Right? Does that make sense? If 0.05 is on the right, 0.95 is on the left. And the way to get the computer to do that is 1 minus B2 for you. Enter. There you go. Positive. It's a positive value. It's got to be because you're talking about a right-tailed test. All right. Now the test statistic. Let's see here. We standardize. This is all still good, right? The standardized function works, right? 0.375 is your p hat. 0.3 is your p0 from the null hypothesis. There's your standard error right there. Now the p-value. The p-value in this case is 1 minus norm s dist. Norm s dist is a left tail thing, right? So this is telling you the area in the left but we have a right-tailed test here, so we've got to get the complement of that. So you have to do 1 minus that to get the right-tailed area. All right, now let me make this bigger so we can see. Now let's compare the two yellow ones, the critical value and the test statistic. That's the classical method. Right, so according to the classical method, we should reject H0 because Z0 is, which is 2.31, is larger than Z alpha, which is the 1.645, okay? By the same token, we need to reject H0, right? If you reject with the classical method, you're going to reject with the p-value method. Just keep that in mind, right? As long as alpha is the same for both. Now, p-value is always a less than thing. So you always want to compare the green p-value here up to alpha right here. That's why I left them both green. If this number right here, the probability, what this is, is the probability of you getting 75 out of 200 by accident. So if the probability of that is lower than 0.05, you're going to reject H0, which it is, right? It is lower than alpha. Therefore, you reject H0. All right, so just keep that in mind. P-value is always a less than thing. Test statistic, the classical method, is greater than if it's a right-tailed, less than if it's a left-tailed, or both ways if it's a two-tailed. But p-value, no matter what kind of test it is, is always less than, always. That's why p-value is actually kind of a nicer, easier method. All right, next time I see you, it will be for a two-tailed test. I know you're excited. See you then.